Uh, we do not work from the premise that if it makes sense, we accept it. We work from the premise that if Revelation says it, we accept it. If Revelation says it, we accept it. We question our own intellect. If something doesn't make sense to us, we question our intellect. We don't question Revelation. But then in Revelation, and this is the point that I wanted to touch upon, Revelation, has, or, or Revelation in terms of sources is of two types. Wahi, the source, is of two types. You have Qat'i. Qat'i, and you have one. Qat'i is unquestionable. One is probabilistic. Unquestionable means that the source by which we've acquired that revelation leaves no doubt whatsoever. It's got to the point where it's absolutely certain. There's no possibility of doubting the source itself. So here we talk about level. Unquestionable means level of certainty. That's qat'i. Which is very important now in Aqeedah. In understanding belief it becomes very important. Qat'i, unquestionable, which is taken to a, uh, taken to a level of certainty. Vani, probabilistic, is taken to a level of high probability. But not certain. Not certainty. We need to understand what's the difference between these important for us. We need to understand what's the difference because in our theory they become very significant. I'm going to ask a question now. If a hadith is sahih, hadith is revelation, Quran and Sunnah are both revelation, which we should talk about that as well. But we will talk about that when we come to the section of revelation. If a hadith is sahih, in Sahih al Bukhari, which does it fall under? Unquestionable probabilistic. Hadith Sahih in Sahih al Bukhari. It's an authentic hadith. Unquestionable. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? And the brother says unquestionable. Hadith Sahih in Sahih al Bukhari. Anybody? Does, does it have to be a good thing? Bukhari's one. What's that? Bukhari's one. Well, that's not the question. The question is if it's. An authentic hadith in Bukhari, or Muslim, any the source, but Bukhari is the highest standard in terms of hadith. What level are we going to say that? Like if the first hadith in Bukhari says actions are by intention, first hadith in Bukhari, singular chain, singular hadith, there's only one set of narrators for that. One Sahabi Sayyidina Umar related that from the Prophet, one Tabi'i related it, and so on. That, what level are we going to put that hadith in? Unquestionable. Brother, he said unquestionable. Anybody say probabilistic? Can we say that the messenger with absolute certainty said that? Such that uh, there's, there's no, no iota of doubt in that. Can we say that? We can't. We can't. We can't say that. Hadith, even if it's authentic, does not mean it's unquestionable. It means it's highly probable that the messenger said it. But has it reached a level of absolute certainty now? One chain, if one chain. And he will, he will look at it this way. Imam Bukhari rahimullah, took a hadith from his shaykh, who took a hadith from Malik, who took it from Nafi', who took it from Ibn Umar, who took it from the Prophet. That Imam, Imam al Bukhari considers that to be the golden chain. He considers that to be the strongest chain. But when Imam Malik took it from his shaykh, Imam, Imam Bukhari took it from his shaykh, who took it from, for example, Imam Malik, took it from Nafi', Ibn Umar, from the Prophet, leaving out the Prophet in the, in the discussion because He's infallible. He's infallible. All the rest of them, even though Malik is Malik, Nafi is Nafi, Ibn Umar is Ibn Umar, and you can't dispute these in rank, could they have made a mistake? Could they have made a mistake? Humanly, it's possible. Humanly, it's possible. Could they have made a mistake? It's in the realms of possibility. But the level that they took it to, it's highly unlikely, to the point we can neglect it. The possibility of error is there, but we can neglect it. And that's why for all practical purposes, a hadith in Bukhari, we take it, we take it, we act upon it, we accept it. But it falls under this category. When we say vani, probabilistic means it's virtually certain that the messenger said it. But can you say 100% such that you can have absolute certainty, you can't say that? What takes it to the level of, 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 of 
What takes it to the level of being unquestionable? Here we have this concept, Qat'i, is defined in terms of sources by Tawatur. Tawatur. And this now is significant <coughs> in Aqeedah. Tawatur. Tawatur, multiple chains. We need to define what is Tawatur. Tawatur is defined as every single generation from the beginning point of Sahabi. There were so many narrators that it's impossible, humanly impossible, that they could have been chance, that they could have all said the same thing by chance, or they could have conspired to make it up. Now, for example, now, if, if, if somebody was to come in here and tell you that, the, that an incident has happened in Manchester Town Centre, one person could make a mistake, he could twist the story, he could have forgotten. Then he goes and tells you as one individual, and you go and relate it on to another individual, and it keeps on going on. What happens there? At the end, it's a completely different story. Chinese whispers, it changes down, it changes down. When we have people of the highest caliber in memory, such as the Sahaba, the Salaf, and so on, that doesn't happen, but there's still a possibility. How do you negate that? If a hundred people completely unrelated came and told you something's happened in Manchester, rationally you say, you're a fool now if you reject it. If two people, yes, three people maybe, but it's, it's reducing. There comes a point where it's rationally, rationally, a same person would have to accept it. That's what Tawata is, multiple chains. That's what Tawata is. When it's Tawata, when a hundred people have told you something, all of them completely unrelated, and they've, rela and they've told 150 people, they told 200 people, and it just kept on increasing. He says it comes to the point where you're absolutely certain. Without, where you're absolutely certain. Multiple, multiple chains raise it to a level of certainty. That's how we know that the Quran is absolute, absolute truth. That's how we know the Quran. When you get into a discussion, we look at this when we come on to the section of divinity. Well, how do you prove the validity of the Quran? This is the key point, Tawatu. This is the key point. The preservation of the Quran has taken place through this. When the Prophet ﷺ passed away, how many Sahaba had memorized the whole Quran? About 23, 24 Sahaba had memorized the whole Quran. Then the next generation, and after the Prophet ﷺ passed away, that increased amongst the Sahaba. More and more of them were memorizing it. The next generation had multiplied. Then after that, every single generation it multiplied. When you've got a thousand, a million people reading a surah exactly the same, is it possible it could have been made up? Is it possible there's an error that's correct in there? If you still claim that, you say saying that you're irrational. In any other sphere in human life, when it gets to such the sheer number of narrators come and tell you the same thing, you say it's, it's unquestionable there. That's primal to Aqeedah. This is fundamental to Aqeedah. Anything, and when we say you true information, yeah, um, one learns a fact from others that could not be a lie. Say in belief, for us to have an absolute belief in a matter, it must be based on tawata or qat'i. You're, you're obliged as a believer to accept anything that's based on such a level of certainty. For example, we are told that on the day of judgment, there's a bridge stretched, stretched across hellfire. So that's an absolute belief you must have. If you reject that, that's considered perfect. Why? Because it's stated in the Qur'an. What's the problem? The Qur'an, the whole of its tawat, it's reached that level of certainty, rejection of its tawfah. Why? Because it's as if the messenger said it directly to you. All of that, that sheer number of narrators in between has removed the possibility of chance or error creeping in. It's as if you received it direct from the messenger. Therefore, you reject the messenger directly. So you see, you have to believe it. You have 25 prophets mentioned in the Qur'an. Every single one of them you, you must believe in. You must believe in them with absolute certainty. Why? Because there's no question. They're mentioned by name. The source is unquestionable, the Quran itself. But then you have, in Hadith, you have reference to Prophet Daniel, there's reference to Prophet Daniel, there's, there's reference to other prophets. There's a, a debate about certain people, are the prophets, like said, the Khadr, there's a debate about whether they're prophets or not. See, that's not reached a level of, of, of question or certainty. Whereby if someone used to turn around and say, I reject Khadr al as the Prophet. So although the source is certain, but there's room to maneuver because it doesn't state explicitly that he's a prophet of God. So there's, so there's room to now question whether he's a prophet or not. What, does, what is our belief based upon? 
something that the source is unquestionable. When it gets to that level, you cannot reject it, and rejection of its kufr. Rejection of its kufr. So when we say intellect is subservient to this, to revelation, is this level of revelation. Well, there's absolutely no doubt whatsoever within the source of it. Any questions on that?